Good Friday morning, everybody. This is Grace, and today I want to talk about uh, the way that people gaslight. And it's going to be a very simple um, story, very simple, but I think a lot of people can relate to it. And this did happen to me just recently. And uh, I think they'll see something familiar in it at least. And make sure you read the description, I mean, the disclaimer in the description box below this video on YouTube. I'm not healthcare professional provider and this is not counseling advice or anything. It's just a story I'm telling and if I say you, I don't mean you. Anyway, to get on with it. Um, if this happened to me about, I'd say three weeks ago, sometime last month, and um, then it happened again. But basically, the first time, I was calling my doctor's office. It's a practice. They have more than one person. I wanted to see one particular person there. And, you know, to schedule an appointment. And I called the number and <clears throat> it it made that uh, sound that and said that it was dis the phone number was disconnected. So I called another number that I know from him. It said it said the same thing, you know. And I looked online, made sure I had the right phone number. I know I did because it was in my cell phone, but just you know, double check. Yeah, it hadn't changed online anything. So I called. I had looked online and found one of their other their other locations. Called that number. So I called that number and the woman told me she said it's not disconnected. And I said um, yes, it is. And I said, I called it more than once, and I called their other number, and it says disconnected. She says, no, it's not disconnected. And uh, I'm sitting there thinking, really now? Okay, so I told her, I said, I, I don't remember the exact sequence, but I told her to put me on hold and call her herself if she, does, if she wants to doubt me. I said, it's disconnected. And I wasn't giving, you know, any deference or, you know, like, oh, she you know, knows everything. You know, I was stating st st Stating the facts and firm, you know, stern. And so she said, no, no, it's it's just that their phone, um, they, the company, they changed over, switched over for the phone service, and it just says that. And I'm like, I'm still sitting there going, well, you know. And she said, well, what did you want anyway? I mean, how rude. You know, this is a front desk person. How rude. And I said, I want to make an appointment. And she said, well, which, well I can do that here. Like, I'm supposed to know that they can make the appointments at their other location for another one. But her whole tone was that of superiority. And um, so I said, this is the doctor, the one I want to see. And it wasn't a doctor, but one of their. And she says, well, she's no longer there. <laughs> this is, I said, okay, well, I still need to make an appointment. And she said, somebody's taking it over for her. I said, okay, I'll make an appointment with that person. And... Um, so she, she said, well, hold on, you know, it takes a while. And she said, well, I can schedule this. I said, let me just call back, uh, you know, another time. So, okay. Now, some of you would say she should have told me the situation the first time she said that it's not disconnected. Okay. She could have told me that, but she didn't. It was, it's, I have seen this far too many times lately, especially as the years go by. It becomes more and more common, it seems, is for somebody in some form of customer service whether it's a um, you know, front desk person or a doctor's office or an administrative assistant somewhere else, uh, even cashiers or anything like customer service related, they will say you're wrong. It's, I mean, I've even seen it in just people, you know, people I've, I've known or know. They just, you're wrong. And then they don't give the reason why that, and just, just to say you're wrong, okay, for one thing, customer service should, you know, know that's not how you, you represent the company is telling somebody, a uh, customer, somebody who's paying, that they're wrong. Okay, you give the explanation. Don't say you're wrong. But no. So <laughs> after that, was, there was more to that. After that, I was like, oh my goodness, you know, really seriously. So I said I'd wait another week or so and call the other number and you know try to schedule it with the one that's in my location. So I did. You know, and I called and it was disconnected. <laughs> so I, I double checked, did the other number, disconnected, got back online, got their, the phone number to the other one, called them, and of course, right off the bat, it was, you're wrong. It's not disconnected. <laughs> so I'm like, told her the story, and she said, well, yeah, but it's still not disconnected. And she said, here's your phone number you can call, it's a back number. Okay. T totally didn't have anything similar to that phone number. I said, okay, this must be somebody's cell phone. It must be. So I called it, and the woman answered, and she said, why are you calling my number? 
And um, I said, because I was given this number by them. And she said, our phones are not disconnected. We have people on hold right now. I said, when I call it, it's disconnected. Okay. And, and I told her what the other one had said, you know, not in any kind of, you know, like inferior kind of way. And she said, well, this is my cell phone. How do, you know, why were you calling it? With a major attitude. And you would think she might stop and think, how would I get her cell phone number in the first place? Yeah, it was, I mean, I'm not going to make a phone number <laughs> and know that's her person to call. You can't look up cell phone numbers, at least as far as I know, for somebody who works there when I don't even know her name. So she should have thought, you know, logically, Somebody must have given me her cell phone number to call to make an appointment, but she had an attitude. Yeah, so I told her, and well, our phones are not disconnected. And it was like, oh my goodness, you know, really? Okay, now this, this practice, this one location, they have actually moved that I know of. Uh, I've been to three locations, and the first time I ever went, they had just moved to that location, so at least four times. And during all the, the, the swap, this is years, um, I'd say four years, so they moved at least four times in four years, that they have had to hire new staff. And I've had to complain about staff. I mean, really bad things that they have said. And I have actually been in the office um, waiting in the waiting room to go you know, see the doctor and heard them say really hateful things to the uh, patients over the phone so it's not just me I'm not just the target no it's just they hire people who are rude and I don't think they're getting it you know but what but it's just amazing it, it just is but I think that's very common these days I think that pl uh, places don't want to pay um, pay enough to have decent people work there and these are people probably they, they I don't know I'm not gonna go there but anyway so, so that, that was one example. Okay, I, fi I finally got an appointment and saw the doctor. And in person, they weren't rude. <laughs> so, a little bit, but not totally. They, they did, you know, just kind of take their time and everything. I was the first person there when I finally saw that, went to see that one, uh, healthcare professional. But I was the first one there, and nobody else was in the office. The first you know, patient there would be the case. And uh, first thing in the morning, they just took their time and everything. It's like, really? Oh my goodness. No wonder they could, you know, backlog. And anyway, so that was one. Then just the other day, um, I mentioned this on my last video about a situation where somebody you know, just went to this place and they were wrong. They basically sent out the misinformation to a lot of people and um, caused a lot of people problem, but they weren't going to say that they were wrong. And instead, it's everybody else is wrong. And this is what I see as a form of gaslighting. You know, your reality of the situation is not real. Now there there is no excuse for, you know, when somebody, I mean, it's not an excuse no matter what it is, but when somebody does something wrong and they're trying to cover the tracks, that, you know, that kind of narcissistic type person, you know, might do that. You know, one size does not fit all. And when I say narcissistic type, I mean, you know, they have the behaviors of, I don't know anybody who's ever been diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. So anyway, but they, they might do that. But when it's just a phone being disconnected, okay, why would you doubt somebody? <laughs> why would you say, you're wrong, you're wrong? Now, you know, people, I'm not the only person who would be calling in and get it, you know, get it, dis you know, have a, you know, that message that is disconnected. And the other place knew that, the other location. So, yeah, they know. But what was that? So what was the purpose? They know that people are calling in and getting a disconnected, you know, a disconnected notice. So why do they insist on saying you're wrong and not, you know, they could say, well, this is the case, but no, it's just, you're wrong. You know, it is not disconnected. Yeah. Anyway, enough on this. Um, I plan on doing another video pretty soon about um, how um, it's becoming a more and more, it's always been, I think forever, I mean, always that some narcissistic type people they have their own little culture and it's growing and it's that collective narcissism. I'll do that on another video. I'll talk to you later. Have a great weekend. Bye.